All right, so here we are on to our next unit. Uh, we're going to start now. Uh, you know, we've, we've done a lot. We've done a, a lot of the math. We understand moles. We, we, we know significant digits. We can write chemical formulas. Uh, but now we're going to start focusing on reactions. Uh, we've done a few labs now where reactions have occurred, uh, but we haven't been able to predict the products of those reactions based on the reactants, uh, nor balance. And so we're going to start with a simple introduction to chemical reactions, and we're going to practice balancing equations that were already predicted for us. Uh, we're going to do it in terms of the symbols and also of the words, uh, write the formulas, and then balance the equation. So before we learn to do it, we're going to practice a little bit of uh, writing names uh, and writing formulas to refresh our memories on where do the charges come from, uh, polyatomic ions and such, uh, and the simple acids and bases. All right, so um, I'm going to change my color here. Okay, uh, so we are going to write the formula. So if you're really lost when I do this, go back and watch the videos. Uh, hydronitric acid. When we named acids, hydro told us that it was binary, and the nitro would tell us it was with nitrogen. So binary meaning only two elements, uh, plus one, minus three, so we get H3N. Uh, carbon tetrachloride. Uh, whenever we have those prefixes, we know it's a molecule, and it tells us not the charge, but how many. Uh, zinc plus two, oxalate. So we need to look at our polyatomic ion list. Uh, that's a minus two, and it's C2O4, so plus two, minus two. Silver sulfide, binary, IDE ending, plus one, minus two. Cobalt, thiosulfate. Now this says cobalt three, so we're going to need parentheses three, because that's a minus two, thiosulfate. Again, our polyatomic ion list. Uh, and again, some practice. I'm just going to run through these. Uh, this would be something that we did in the beginning of class. Refresh your memory. Um, you have the notes on this if you want to practice these and then check your answers. It's a little too late for some of them. Uh, di, phosphorus, tri, oxide. Right now, so the whole point of doing this is where does the two come from in this one? Or where does the three come from in this one? Or where does the three come from in that one? Uh, because when we're balancing chemical reactions, we cannot simply just start changing subscripts because it makes our life easier. We have to still follow the same rules we use to write the formulas for these. Um, and then the same thing here, uh, chromium 3 oxide. That's a 2 because that's a minus 2 and a plus 3. Barium sulfate is SO4, so that 4 belongs to the sulfate. Plus 2 minus 2, plus 2 minus 1, plus 1 minus 1, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to skip ahead now. All right, so chemical reactions. A chemical equation is a shorthand method for representing a chemical reaction. Uh, it always is reactants yield products, at least in the beginning. Um, we get a little more complicated later in the year. Uh, and then what we say for the arrow is yields. So reactants yield products. Uh, that's what we normally do. All right, so you can see a reaction here. If, if iron is rusting, uh, the reaction is iron reacts with oxygen. You could even say iron metal reacts with oxygen gas to produce the solid iron 3 oxide. You don't want to have to do that every time you have a chemical reaction. And so what we do is we transfer this into a chemical reaction. So iron reacts with oxygen means these two things right here go on the reactant side of the equation. So iron reacts with oxygen. Fe, iron, plus O2, oxygen. Now we learned the Hofbrinkel elements, and I do have a slide coming up that will uh, reiterate this, but there's our Hofbrinkel elements, the seven diatomic molecules. Remember, they're always two when they're by themselves, and oxygen there is by itself, so it's O2. Yields, so to produce, yields. To the product side, iron 3 oxide, so iron plus 3 minus 2. This is a heck of a lot easier to look at than that entire sentence. And so it's a shorthand way to represent uh, what happens in a chemical reaction, both the reactants and the product side. The reactants are separated by plus signs. If there was another product, that would be separated by a plus sign. Um, but the left to right uh, way to look at this. And as I just said, that's just reiterating it. Um, these are the seven Hofbrinkel elements. Remember, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. These seven 
Hofbrinkle elements. Easy way to remember it. And remember, that's only when they are a free element. A free element means it's by itself. And a free element by itself has a zero charge. So, you know, chlorine forms a minus one ion. But if you have chlorine all by itself, it's always Cl2. Uh, and it has a zero charge. This is the free element form uh, of chlorine. All right, so oxygen two, nitrogen, hydrogen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can also see the uh, state of matter in the lower right-hand corner as a subscript. So if it's a solid, now if it's a true crystalline solid, you'd see Cr, a liquid, a gas. Aq stands for aqueous, which would mean it's a substance that has been dissolved in water. Most of the reactions that we do um, are aqueous solutions that are reacting together. And we'll get a little more into that. All right, so now the heart and soul, nuts and bolts um, of balancing an equation. According to the law of conservation of mass, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. A good chemi or a, a science catchphrase you've learned before. Matter can't be created nor destroyed. So however many grams of something you start with, you've got to end up with the same number of grams. Um, or the number of atoms you start with, you have to end up with the same number of atoms. Now, it could get rearranged, and that's what a chemical reaction is all about. That means in a chemical equation, you have to have the same number of each element on both sides of the equation. So we're talking on the um, right hand and on the left hand, you know, the reactants and the product side. You have to have the same number of each element. All right. I can show you how to balance equations with these two simple steps. You just got to practice it. You can watch them and 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 watch them. Watch them. Uh, but until you balance some equations on your own uh, and you figure it out, the trial and error associated with it, uh, or the sort of educated trial and error associated with it, uh, you know, you, you, you're not going to get any better at them. So here's the two steps. First thing to do, determine how many of each element are on both sides of the equation. Use a pencil because you're going to have to erase at times. Uh, or scribble it out and rewrite it. Um, it's easy for me to hear it on the board because I can just erase my, you know, pretend ink. Uh, number two, you may only add coefficients to balance the equation. So you can only add coefficients in front of the substances. You may never, you can see I have it capitalized, underlined, bold print, a bunch of exclamation points. You can never change subscripts to balance an equation. That goes back to what I just practiced there in the beginning. When we write the formula for uh, barium sulfate, those subscripts mean something. Um, Fe2O3, those subscripts mean something. You can't just change them because it makes balancing the equation easier. Okay, here we go. All right, so our first one, there it is. Iron plus oxygen yields iron three oxide. So here's what I like to do. At the arrow, I like to draw a line down. And then I start from left to right, and I count... Um, how many I have of each element, and I write it down. So I have one Fe, and I have two O's on the left-hand side. Now, on the right-hand side, I, I like to keep it in the same order that I wrote it on the left-hand side. So it may not be in the same order over here, but I like to keep it the same so that I can just refer straight across. Um, and over here, I have two Fe's, and I have three oxygens. So that is an unbalanced chemical reaction. If we left it this way and said it was correct, that means an we had one iron to start with, but now we have two. So we've created an iron. Two oxygens becoming three. We've created an oxygen, and that's not possible. The law of conservation of mass, again, matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So in this unbalanced form, we've got to fix it. So we've got to fix it. It's not correct. One iron and one oxygen are never going to combine because that is, again, creating matter. All right, so here's what we do. I put some lines here you can see right in front to show that you can only add coefficients in front of this to balance it. So we can't just stick something in the middle of a compound, and we can't change the subscripts. The only thing I can do is add coefficients. All right, so I could start by balancing the irons by placing a 2 in front of here, and then the irons would be okay, but I can see, looking ahead a little bit, uh, that that's not going to balance the oxygens. Um, this is a very common one that occurs when you have 2 and 3. So what we're looking for there is sort of a common factor, a common denominator, if you will, when you're adding fractions. Uh, so I know that I can make those equal with a factor of 6. So I'm going to place a 2 in front of here and a 3 in front of there. Now, here's why we use a pencil. This one now is no longer 2. It's now 3 times 2, or 6 oxygens. 
This one is no longer three. It's now three times two or six oxygens. But by placing a two in front of here, I also changed my irons to four. Two times two and two times three. So my oxygens are now balanced, but my irons aren't. So I got to work. So I had to start here. Then I had to go to this side. Now I got to go back to that side. And that's what I mean by trial and error. And the more of these you do, you'll get better. Uh, so now I can see that if I place a four there in front of that, that gives me four irons. I now have four irons and six oxygens on both sides of this equation. So that is the balanced reaction that occurs. So though we were very simply saying iron reacts with oxygen to produce iron-free oxide, we could now be more specific and say it takes four irons, or even more specific than that, it takes four moles of iron to react with three moles of oxygen to make two moles of iron three oxide. So that's how that reaction will occur when it is in nature and when it occurs in reality because now it's balanced. All right, next one. A, a much easier one here. I probably should start with this one, but um, again, I'm going to draw a line down. I'm going to say I have one mg and two o's. On this side, I have one mg and only one O. So again, a not a balanced reaction. So I put a 2 there, and that gives me two O's. It also gives me two mg's. So now i got to work my way back over here. Well, my O's are good, but now I need a 2 here to give me two mg's. And my equation is now balanced. Ta-da. Congratulations. Next one. Whenever possible, balance oxygen last and hydrogen second to last. I'm going to harp on that uh, you know, while we're balancing these and while we're improving uh, and getting better at it. That's something that I'm going to continue to say. On the more difficult ones, uh, leave oxygen for last. A lot of times it will work itself out. Um, and then hydrogen right before it, if possible. Sometimes you can't. Um, the other thing is treat polyatomic ions as a unit rather than separating it into its elements. But that only works if it is not split apart on the other side. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that too. Here's an example of that. So now if I wanted to count this, I could say I have 1Na, 1N, 3 plus 12 is 15 O's, 2 aluminums, and 3 sulfurs. So that separating everything out. But I'm not going to do that because what I recognize is I see that I have a nitrate, an NO3, and it stays NO3 on this side. So instead of separating that, I'm going to say I have 1NO3. And then I can see that SO4 stays SO4. So I'm going to say I have two ALs and three SO4s. So now on this side, I have two sodiums. I like, again, to go in the same order. So I'm going to look at the nitrates. I have three nitrates, one aluminum, and one sulfate. All right, so let's see where we can go. Uh, we got to kind of pick the right one and scanning and looking at this. Um, and again, you could just jump in blindly with both feet and maybe get lucky starting with the right one. But I'm going to look ahead and I see, uh, I have one nitrate on this side and I have three nitrates on that side. But if I place a three in front of here, that's going to give me three sodiums and I'm not going to be able to balance that with the two sodiums over here. So I'm going to start with aluminum. Again, that's just sort of an educated trial and error, uh, looking ahead a little bit. So by starting with aluminum, I'm going to place a 2 in front of the aluminum nitrate. Now that changes the aluminum to 2. And it changes the nitrates to 2 times 3, which is 6. So now my aluminums are good. So now I'm going to work my way back over here, and I'm going to balance these nitrates. So now I'm going to balance the nitrates by placing a 6 in front of there. That gives me 6 nitrates. But it also gives me 6 sodiums. So then again, I'm going to work my way back over here now and fix my sodiums by placing a 3 there. That gives me 6 sodiums. It also gives me 3 sulfates. I put them over there. I'll put them over here. And I can see that I have, once again, balanced the reaction. Okay, so let's count them again. Now, we don't have polyatomic ions this time, so I can't just you know, keep the oxygens together. So let me show you how you count this one. So we have two O's. One carbon, two sulfurs. I have, again, I like to go in the same order. So now oxygens, I have two plus two is four oxygens. So that's, um, they're on the product side, so I have four. Even though they're not together, I have four total. I have one carbon. Oops, I'm trying to keep those in the same. I keep messing it up. 
uh, one carbon, um, and one sulfur. So you can see I'm not balanced. Um, and again, I want to keep oxygen last if I can, uh, because like I said, oftentimes it will work itself out. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to start right here with the two in front of the sulfur. So that the sulfur is balanced, so there's a two. Two sulfurs are good. Now what did that change? Well, now I have two times two is four, plus two is six oxygens. It didn't affect the carbons. Um, so now when I come back to this side, my carbons are still good, but I, sulfurs are good. I need to place a three here, and that will give me six oxygens, um, and I am balanced. Now the way you would read this out to your teacher is, I have, you say three O2, one CS2, one CO2, and two SO2. So the way you would normally say it is the coefficients are three, one, one, two. Now if you ended up with six, two, two, and four, that would be balanced, but you can see those coefficients can all be reduced, and so we'd end up with the same uh, three, one, one, and two. So the mole ratios, if you will, when we start doing uh, stoichiometry again, uh, it's a three to one, or it's a six to two, or it's a nine to three, and so, uh, you know, the math works out the same. All right, so one more here, or a few more here. Two AGs, one O, one AG, two O's. Now, I said start with the oxygen last, but if I put a 2 in front of here, it's not going to balance because then I didn't do anything. So I'm going to place a 2 over here. That gives me 2 O's, and it gives me 4 AG's. The 2 O's are good. I just need a 4 there to give me 4 AG's. So again, a pretty simple one there. All right, so here's a bunch to try. Uh, I'm going I'm to show you that you can, when you get a little better at this, you don't have to write everything down. You can just kind of scan back and forth, and I can see... Uh, where I want to go here, which would be, um, I'm going to start with a three there and balance the bariums first. And then I can see I need a two there to balance the phosphates. So that gives me three BAs, three BAs, two PO4s, two PO4s. I have six plus six is 12 hydrogens. So I need a six there to give me 12 hydrogens. And then I have six O's and 6 O's, again, other than the PO4 O's. So that's balanced. Um, next one, let's see, again, looking ahead here. Uh, um, sometimes you just kind of have to jump in, and I'm going to put a 2 there to balance the chlorine. So I'm going to start with chlorine. Um, so I now have 2 H's and 2 H's, so that's good. I have 1 CA and 1 CA, that's good. I have 1 C and 1 C. Now this is a case where you can't keep carbonate the same because there's no carbonate kept over here. It's split. Uh, so 1 carbon and 1 carbon. All right, now for the oxygens. They're usually the killer. Um, I have three O's, and I have three O's, so I'm balanced. So that one was um, a lot easier than it seemed at first. All right, so let's place a two in front of there. That gives me two H's, two H's, two N's, two N's, but it gives me six O's and only two O's. So a three there gives me six O's. All right, now this one right here is a special one, and I'm going to point it out to you now. And when we learn our types of reactions, you'll see that. But this is called a combustion reaction. Combustion reaction. Um, a combustion reaction is when you take a hydrocarbon, so something that contains carbon and hydrogen, and you burn it. Now, when you burn something, that means you're adding O2. The two products are always going to be carbon dioxide and water. And here's a quick way to solve these. Place a 2 in front of the hydrocarbon, and then do oxygen last. So by placing a 2 in front of there, that gives me 16 carbons. So I'm going to put a 16 there to give me 16 carbons. That gives me 20 hydrogens. So by placing a 10 there, that gives me 20 hydrogens. So now on this side, I have 32 plus 10 is 42 oxygens. So I'm going to place a 21 in front of there to give me 42 oxygens. So that makes that a lot easier than trial and error again. Um, because if you did not do that, you would have got uh, an 8 and a 5 here. You would have ended up with an 8 and a 5, which would have given you 16 plus 5 is 23 oxygens on that side. So if you got 23 oxygens on this side, you would need um, an 11 and a half to balance it. And so you'd get a 1, an 11 and a half, an 8, and a 5. Sorry. A five, which you could see if you double it, you end up with uh, what we got. All right, so there's balancing equations. Uh, definitely a trial and error thing. You just got to practice them. There's no other way around that. Um, and I'm, I'll have a worksheet on there, and I'll, uh, I'll go through that one with you too. Um, but not today. I want you to practice for a little bit. Okay.